while we're waiting for the clerk to get the uh, her computer up, we can go to the uh, uh, presentation by Jennifer Roy on program of studies. Jennifer. Good evening. Um, by this time, you would have already had the program of studies that was electronically sent to you. Um, as you know, there was a letter that was attached to it. There weren't uh, many modifications that were made to it. Uh, we tried to clean up some of the language, make it easy uh, to understand, to follow. A um, couple of things that we did in major is we took a look at the math-related courses. Um, it's very important to comply with ride regulations to make sure that if we list it as a math course, that it actually contains a certain number of standards that are in it. So we went through, and again, we went through that list, make sure we clean that up, to say that the ones that we list as math-related that someone would take as a senior were actually math-related and contain the number of standards that were in there. The other thing that you saw is you just saw a cleaner version of graduation requirements. You saw two new classes, portfolio preparation, that was to help with some of our art students to prepare them if they were going to take AP. It gives them their first look at creating an actual portfolio. The other course was statistics um, that was rewritten. It used to be an intro to stats course. They rewrote that, added a little bit more content in it to, again, make it a math related. The AP courses stayed the same. Um, there's 13 of them that are offered. And we established a new program where if a course did not run over three years, that we dropped it. And if a teacher wanted to the following year, they could uh, revamp the course and offer it again in November. So those were the um, modifications that were made to it. It wasn't really any major changes from the year before. Is that uh, and before the committee's edification, just uh, so you know, every year this comes to you <coughs> and we go out to print, if you will, following a presentation to you. And uh, normally around this time we do go out to print. So we'd love to have you actually take a vote on this this evening. Um. <coughs> When does this, um, when do the, the uh, students pick the courses? Um? The students will start to uh, pick the courses. The program of studies will be ready hopefully uh, February 1st. Teacher recommendations occur mm -hmm. the first two weeks of February and then around that February 14th is when the students will actually start working with the guidance counselors. Are there any questions? Yes, Mrs. Benson. I don't have any questions, but I must congratulate you, Ms. Uh, Roy, uh, you did a wonderful job, and I read each one of them, and I studied it very closely. And thanks to you and Dr. Field, there's a road map. But I have two things that I made notes on. Mm -hmm. In recent weeks, I've read about students in music and students from North Kingstown, and I put a bracket around the history of pop, pop, pop music, one and two. And if kids are good in music, they seem to be able to get employment just as quick and be able to <coughs> contribute to society. And I was wondering why it was a half a credit for those two courses. It's almost like if you were given credit for playing in sports, that's the linchpin that holds certain kids in school. And that was one of the questions. And my other one was that I didn't see a complete direction for kids with IEPs and uh, educational disadvantage, as our past governor referred to it. Mm -hmm. And why I went to that one was some four years ago, a situation arose about the graduation of this child and she was completely handicapped and then the day before graduation she couldn't graduate but she'd gone all through ninth through twelfth grade here at the high school mm -hmm. so maybe that's something that you can get back to us and we can get it ironed out before it has to go to print Dr. Thun. Well, well actually I, I can I can answer your question 
The, the history of pop is offered in half credits, and, and I'm going to you know, give you my opinion on it. Just so that it's offered to more students, they have a chance to take it. It also allows us to have uh, both courses that are in there. It gets uh -huh. more students involved. The IEP question that you have, the services, um, one of the additional things that I did was it lists services that are in there. The IEP service doesn't go into great detail in the program of studies because that's something if a parent um, believes that their child is, is suffering from some sort of disability, they'll contact the director of people, people services and they'll go through a, a chain of command that's, that's there. So it doesn't really go into as much detail as the other courses yes. do, but at least the parent knows and it also gives the parent an opportunity and gives them a phone number which they can contact. From that point, that process kind of takes in itself. So it really doesn't go into as much detail in the program of studies because that's a, a personal, private, um, individualized program for that student. Okay. I noticed that, but I wanted to hear you say you had some of the services that were offered, you know, like you listed speech and some of the other. Oh, we other. do. Yes. You had those listed there. Yep. But it was just a question I wanted to ask because a kid with a two old, uh 504 and an IEP cannot be expected to come up to the level of a general student and receive gradu and graduate, but yet he might be here for four years and do, does all he can, and I just didn't see anything in there that would accommodate that child. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Go ahead. Yes, Roy. Um, I'm just curious as to which classes were dropped, and were they all dropped because of the lack of interest? Or was there any other reasons? There was about, um, there were several classes that were dropped. They were dropped over the course of three years that they did not participate. Mm -hmm. Some of the courses, um, there was a theater and producing a play course that had not run in three years. There was a nature journaling course that had not run in three years. So the department heads were informed of that and they brought it back to their departments. And again, the option was every November we come back and if there's a new course that they wanted to, it pretty much was dropped for a lack of interest because we hadn't run it in three years. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Much. Ms. Roy. Uh, first, I'd like to say I, <coughs> I have two grandchildren in college today. <coughs> and each of them, as a result of taking the AP courses here at North Kingstown, uh, basically got a half semester. Actually, it's a full semester, right? It's, the, it's February, I mean, it's a September to. Yep, full year course. They got like 21 credits mm -hmm. as a result of wow. taking the AP courses. Wow. And one was 19, I think one was 20. So uh, obviously the courses you're running in that area uh, have been excellent for the kids that are going on and, you know, the, the kids that need that. So I commend the, the uh, school for the program and hope all the money's there so we can continue to uh, fund those courses. Which brings me to another question. You never know, is this going to change our impact on our budget? The courses that are running this year? Well, the changes in our, our new, you know, curriculum. I can field that if you want. Um, every year, a high school budget is driven by what students select. It's the number of sections we run. And um, in my budget talk that you'll hopefully see this evening, if not next week, you'll see a slide tonight you didn't see last night about my proposed additions. In that, there are a couple of fractions at the high school I would propose to you. I'll give you one right now, one right now really quick. At the high school, historically, we had or have an internship where kids go out in the community and do um, internships. We found in looking at it closely, it wasn't doing what it needed to do, and I'll talk more about it later. I would need a point two of a person to do it correctly. So you'll see my proposed ads. But I'll tell you, you never really know at the high school what the eventual FTE count would be. It could be a point six less of ELA, a point six more of math. But in the end, we work within like a certain confines with um, Ms. Roy on Dr. Kenworthy, and we try to uh, get it done. But I have not budgeted for any quantum increases in FTEs. Okay. Uh, we, I guess I understand that, but uh, do a good job. You've done a very good job, and uh, <laughs> you've got my support. Thank you very, very much. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Good one. Do you have a question? No, I didn't have a question. Oh, okay. I, I just had a comment. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I just wanted to say that I'm very pleased with the uh, level of courses that we add or we have here that um, 
I think we have very good offerings. A number of the courses I thought would be very interesting to take. And so I, I um, thank you and the rest of the administration for the number of courses we do offer and for, for the variety. Okay. All right, moving on. <coughs> I have one more I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. No, we, we, need, we need to get Bill I know up, so I know we we're going to have Okay. Uh -huh. The one thing I wanted to leave is I would hope that we could get our intern program back going between links and the volunteers and people. I think an intern is very important. I know kids that um, did intern at Alice Donuts one of the local businesses here in town for years and is now purchasing a donut shop. And kids that do intern at Brooks, a Rite Aid. So that's very important to me because, see, everyone's not going to college. But if these kids can get into an intern program and you see every day you see something on television uh, within the educational community about the need for health care. And even if they only got into an intern program down at the senior center when the doctors are there taking the blood pressure, that's putting the school in the community and giving these kids a chance that don't see that hope that a kid's in a course like Mr. Mudge was talking about. So that's what I wanted to say, and I hope you can work on that. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh -huh. Wright. And, and you understand what I mean, Ms. Doge? Yes, I do. Yes, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> now, if the clerk would please read the, the roll. Linda Avanzado? Here. Melboy Benson? Here. Larry Cerisi? William Mudge? Present. Kimberly Page? Here. Joe Thompson? Here. Richard Welch? Here. Julia Held? Here. And the student tonight? Michael Avanzato? Here. Yay. I would just like to inform the audience that Larry Cerisi uh, is not here tonight as he had an operation today and will probably be out for at least three weeks. And uh, I, I can report, I guess at this time, that his operation was successful. Okay, the calendars, please. <clears throat> January 10th, we have a policy or that was passed. Um, the next event we have <coughs> is January 17th, there's no school for Martin Luther King Day. We have a school committee budget meeting at 8.30 p.m. on January 18th, and then a school committee business meeting at 7 p.m. on January 25th. And for those of you who are not aware, there is no school tomorrow. <coughs> okay. We're going to jump around on the agenda as uh, the superintendent has to leave here by 8 o'clock. And we want to go to the Jamestown budget. Uh, tuition. Thank you. Over the past several months, uh, my administrative team has been looking at the question of the tuition that we need to set for next year's Jamestown students. Um, in those conversations first, I would let you, just let you know, I believe, and I think many of you would agree, that Jamestown truly is value added for, uh, for our, our school district. So I'm really you know, happy to have them with us. Um, in terms of getting to the actual number, one thing we had to look at is we had to transition from what's called insight to Uniform Tribal Council, UCOA. You've all heard of that. It's a new way to categorize all of our money. And it's very confusing even for us who work with it every day. Having said that, we tried to look at a UCOA number that included all the different variables. In our conversations, we did find a few pieces that we felt historically weren't in the number that we should put in the number. For example, Dr. Roger's time, a piece of Dr. Roger who works at the high school, that's part of the conversation in terms of the tuition number. So having said that, all in, you know, we also looked at one last piece, we looked at um, grants, federal grants, and put that in the high school allocation. So to summarize it all up in your packet, as you can see, the proposed tuition number for a general education student would be 9827. That's approximately 116 more dollars than the previous year. Special education would go up more dramatically due to the federal grant conversation. That goes up approximately $5,000 per student to 3738. 
A caveat on that one, as you may know, these are always numbers in the rears. These numbers for special ed will go down. A big piece of this was the R money we were receiving. So as that goes away, you see the number drop in the years to follow. And lastly, ESL uh, up to 52, uh, 545, approximately $890 <coughs> more. So that's my proposal to the committee for tuition for the following school year for Jamestown. So with that, I can take any questions you may have. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move to table this item until we can have further discussion. I find that that as a new committee member, I am certainly unaware of the actions and things that have transpired. In fact, and I don't know why we have to make that decision tonight. There is nothing binding. There is not an agreement that's in place that, you know, suggests we need to do that. I would also like to submit to the chairman the fact that that apparently former school committee chairman Cerisi on October 26th of this year <coughs> signed a memo of agreement with Jamestown regarding students attending North Kingston. I would please submit that for the record for me. Okay, please. Uh, and with we respect to that, <coughs> I have many, many questions. In fact, if you look at that rate, I asked what this rate is based on. Apparently, it's based on a contract that hasn't been approved. I look at that $9,827. It has no bond cost in it. As we know, we still have a 25-year bond debt with the North Kingstown High School. Okay, and Jamestown was obligated to pay 30 percent. And I don't see any figures in there. I would also say, <clears throat> quite frankly, if you look at this closely, you will see since a rate was established for 2011, which was last year, and I believe that was $9,012, that the general education rate, <clears throat> okay, has gone up a mere $32, $31. Bill, I'd like to have the and, uh, the attorney address your concern. In a, I haven't in finished a, yet. Excuse me, Bill. I haven't in, finished excuse my me. comment. Well, I'm going to talk to you about it. <laughs> in the next time, would you please wait to be identified by the chair rather than speaking out? Thank you. Uh, Thank Ms. you. Carroll, would you please address yes. Mr. Uh, um, first of all, the actual contract with Jamestown, the original contract, expires on June 30, 2012. However. That's not correct. By 2011. By November 1st of each year, since we are now in the, we were in the last three years of the contract, in November 1st, either we can notify Jamestown that we no longer want their students, or they can notify us that they're no longer going to send their students. So we had a November 1st deadline to share that information from Jamestown to North Kingstown. That's incorrect. Beca because we Please did not have um, a set we hadn't agreed on a set payment of tuition. We worked with Jamestown and we got a continuance of that November 1st deadline to January 1st. It was an agreement between the two school committees. It was uh, an, a motion approved by this school committee to continue to January 1st. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it was an agreement with the Jamestown School Committee to continue till January 1st. When we realized that we still did not have a working number between the two committees, we then further extended that contract decision to G uh, January 15th. So there were two memorandums of agreement, the first one extending to January 1st, the second one extending to after tonight's meeting. We wanted to make sure we had the last opportunity tonight. We need to tell Jamestown tonight what we are going to charge for tuition for Jamestown students so that then they at their meeting will have the opportunity to make a decision as to whether they're going to notify us whether they're going to continue to send students to Jamestown. What would happen if they don't like or they can't accept the number that we come up with, they will notify us that starting next year they are not going to be sending their freshmen to North Kingstown. And then it would be we'd lose the sophomores. So we need to make a decision tonight 
or Jamestown may make the decision at its next meeting, which is Thursday? Thursday. Thursday night, that they will no longer send students here, they will send the students somewhere else. So you must decide tonight on a tuition rate. That's all you're deciding tonight is the tuition rate so that Jamestown on Thursday can then decide whether they want to notify us whether they're, not, they're going to continue to send students to North Kingstown. That's Thank you, Mrs. Carroll. Now, erroneous. Mr. Mudge. Completely erroneous. I am Mr. so disappointed. Mr. Mudge. Yes. If you would please make a motion so that we can vote it up or down. I will vote. not. I'd like to Get speak about this first. Okay. I, 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 then I then you've got that motion, so let's take a vote on your motion to table. <laughs> okay. It Mr. has Mudge. no second. Is there a second on the motion okay. to table? Second. Okay, now we can go into discussion. Thank you. May I uh, speak? I have a piece of paper in front of me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, are you going to wait to be uh, acknowledged, or are we going to go through this every time? You're getting close. No, you're getting close, Bill. Would you just please go along with the rules? Thank you. Mrs. Avizano, you had something to say? Just a quick uh, point. Um, a lot of aspects of the Jamestown contract were troubling to the committee and have been looked into and revised and we still have a ways to go with this and that's the reason why we went to a one-year situation so that we could have flexibility on both sides uh, to look at the agreement. Obviously North Kingstown is very um, fortunate to have the Jamestown students here and we want to keep them here and that goes without saying. Um, I think that according to the attorney's advice we need to do this on the tuition rate right now. I'm. I'll be anxious to hear what the superintendent says um, after this motion, depending upon whether it passes or fails, regarding what <coughs> his recommendation is. But I see that there's an increase, and I think that that's a good thing. And I think we have another year where we can look at the amount again. So, and the contract language. And the contract language as well, yeah, because there are other issues to be addressed in the future on that. Mr. Mrs. Page. Uh, excuse me, I think I was in line before, Mr. but go ahead, no, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead, Mr. Mr. Mudge. I just thought we were going to follow protocol, that's all. Well, I, while I understand your arguments that you're going to make, Bill, I would say that we ought to vote on this tonight because we have had a number of times where we've been talking about this contract for um, a, about a year, and we have um, had continual negotiations in November when we didn't think we were quite ready with the um, <clears throat> Um, we talked about this in May. We then talked about it in August. In November, when it was decided we didn't quite have um, an agreed-on rate, we <coughs> said that we would then push it off. And both sides have been very gracious about putting this off, but I think we've come to the time where we can't do that anymore because it is budget time for both of us. So we need to make a decision, and I'll be saying that, no, I don't want to table this tonight, that Thank I do want to make sure that we vote on this tonight. Thank you. I appreciate your comments, but I think, in fact, with two lawyers here, I'd like them to look at this, because I have a contract in front of me that says, Jamestown has the option by January 1st of this year of making a decision. Now, is this contract binding or not? There is no reason to make a decision tonight. Look at that. This is what was signed by the school committee chairman on October 26th, and I was trying to get information to make a decision to find out what the best things are. I couldn't get this information. I stumbled across it, and then I finally asked the school department this today. Please give me an, a, an opinion on what this contract says. I think it says clearly, okay, if Jamestown opts to, dis, to discontinue sending children, da 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 to North Kingstown no later than January 1 of the prior year, this continuance. This was in effect. Did Jamestown send us a note saying they didn't want to continue next year? Mm -mm. We continued that no, no, January no. I, 15th. I know you're talking about a memorandum of agreement no, that I'm was talking signed about on October 26, 2010. I'm talking about agreement. Amendment 3 to the contract. Amendment 3. Is that what you just handed down? Yes. Just what you just handed Amendment me? 3. Okay. And by the way, this is the document. And, and I have also, I'd like to say, which is appalling to me, okay, I ha received an email today someplace, and in fact, who was the school committee, subcommittee, that was working with Jamestown? I was informed there was none. Could somebody tell me who the chairman of the subcommittee was for this school department assigned by this school committee to negotiate a contract? Mr. Mudge, what are you talking about as Amendment 3? I just handed it to you. Addendum. 
addendum three. Addendum three. To the contract. The agreement dated June 30th, 2001. Is that what you're talking about? It says threw it up there. Yes. Yes, it says threw it up there. Yep. That does this. We, in the original contract, with all of its addendums and additions and, and addition, exhibits, <coughs> on November 1st, we either needed to tell Jamestown that we didn't want the Jamestown students, or Jamestown needed to tell us that they didn't want, I mean, that they didn't want to send their students to us. We were negotiating, we were trying to come Who's up with We a, were negotiating. Jamestown and North Kingstown. Who for North Kingstown? Um, I sat in a meeting with Dr. Thornton, um, several course, members of the committee were, at different were you times came to meeting. to represent North Kingstown through committee to negotiate with Jamestown? Yes. I have not found that anywhere that we had a negotiation committee that was approved by the North Kingstown School Committee. May I continue? And I've asked the minutes of meetings, I, there and there no, are none. We didn't come to any agreement, and that's why. It's not the issue. Jamestown and North Kingstown school committees, at a vote of both school committees, voted to continue the November 1st date to January 1st. We needed more time, so we had a, there's another addendum that was signed by and adopted by both committees, extending to January 15th. You must decide tonight what the tuition rate is going to be so that Jamestown at its school committee meeting on Thursday night can decide whether they want to continue sending their students to North Kingstown. I, if you don't vote tonight, then they will have no information for which they can vote. And do you want to take a chance that based on the fact that we can't give them a number, they pull their students? You know, the, the whole process has been just incredible. Now, you're telling me besides this one that was signed on uh, October 26, just before election, that we would I'll extend this to January 1st. Is there another one besides yes. this? Yes. Well, when, when, when is the school committee going to see these things? We and when was it voted? When was the other That's extension voted on? This was discussed Discuss multiple this. times at open meetings. I asked for this to one, be. One at a time, please. I asked for the information from the superintendent for all documentation so that I could see that. Okay, and I just got this one. I didn't receive the latest one. And furthermore, how can you change a contract and put a rate in that the rate doesn't agree with the formula of the contract? Excuse me, we're not changing the contract. You though. are we're talking changing about the, the contract, sir. Okay, we need to move the question. Okay. Excuse me, I haven't finished yet. For example, all we have to do is look at the new rate. The new rate vice the old rate. The old rate said we would have, and in fact, in fiscal year 10 and 11, you had a facility bond rate of, per the contract, of $629.10 and $610.11. And accordingly, there is no facility bond rate in this contract, which is a violation of the contract. And furthermore, if you look at this, and my research tells me, we haven't even approved, to the best of my knowledge, the fiscal year 10 rate with Jamestown, nor have we approved a fiscal year 11 rate. And I'd like to show, have somebody show me where we approve that fiscal year 10 and fiscal year 11 rate. Okay, Bill. That's not going to happen right now. We have a motion made by you and seconded. I, I, this is it, germane. No, but wait a minute, Bill. If your motion passes, then everything stops and we go forward. Well, if it doesn't pass, then we'll go on well, from there. Let's continue the discussion on the lack no, of information of why I'm bringing this up, okay, Bill. is the fact that we don't have sufficient information in here, okay? It's obvious. We don't, we, we, we uh, have no, and just look at it, don't believe me. We have a contract that says we'll have, to, we'll have uh, a, a, a cost for uh, uh, the bond issue, that's not in here. Could somebody tell me what the bond cost is in this rate? Is the bond cost part of the contract formula? The answer is yes. So we can't change this unless we change the contract. Okay, Kim. Um, Bill, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you, and at this time I'm going to ask for we, that we call the question. Thank you. We need a vote on to call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 
Y yes, but you have to call the question first, right? Okay. You have to take a vote on call the question. Right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, the ayes have it. Okay, so now we'll take a vote on the motion to table um, the tuition uh, contract. To table it. To table it. Isn't that what you asked for? Yes, sir. Okay. All those in favor of, you know what? We'll have a roll call on this. <coughs> Please call the roll. Um, yeah. when, when discussion is over. We're taking, taking a vote on the I motion. I have one important question, though. Uh, no, we're, Mrs. Benson, we're beyond that point now. You didn't give us a chance. Mr. Mudge was doing the we, talking. We called the question. We, we called the question. Everybody voted to call the question. It's now time to vote. Please call the roll. Linda Avanzato. No. Melvoy Benson. Abstain. William Mudge. Yes. Kimberly Page. No. Joe Thompson. No. Richard Welsh. No. Julia Held. Oh, she didn't vote. <laughs> what is it, please? What was the count? Here's the one that. Motion passes five to one. No, no, no. Fails. The motion fails. Fails. Motion fails. fails. Motion five failed to five to one. one. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Avitano. I'm just going to make a couple quick comments. Um, I think we all are aware that the Jamestown contract was a mess, and this committee said that repeatedly. And, and yes, there were addendums all over the place, and that's the reason why this committee, uh, because we had two or three sessions of trying to iron it all out, said we're going to agree on the rate for now. And, this, and we, agreed, we agreed as a committee that we were going to just set the rate and discuss the rest of the problems and all the language and the rest of the contract in the future because we just didn't have the time to do that and that's where we are now this addendum that you're referring to we are now past that date right. so so we need to vote on the tuition rate that's the way i see it um, and, and again this is an open matter that will now have the flexibility to revisit the rate and increase if we need to and then also to address the language and the problems um, there were several committees for negotiations um, of Jamestown tuition and contract. And, and Mrs. Brunel and I think Mrs. Page was also on the committee at one time. And it changed up a few times. I don't really know. It, if you allow me to jump in, it, it wasn't necessarily a committee as much as it was a group of people. And it, so that's why there are no committee reports. And so at times yeah. it was the sort of thing of, I think I went once to a meeting. I, I don't know how many times the other people went. Um, I was not able to go over to Jamestown, but it was when they came t to our place that I met at the superintendent's office. So it was more of a discussion. There was a, I would also point out that during the teacher's contract negotiation meetings, I don't think there are minutes of the teacher's contract negotiations, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are no minutes of the negotiation meetings, just as there are no minutes of the negotiation meetings of the Jamestown contract. Um, well, I understood it. So, uh, I just, respond? Uh, you respond? <coughs> you asked for the superintendent's recommendation. Mrs. Benson. Uh, I would just like to make it clear to the committee and to the members from Jamestown, the question I wanted to ask, and you said we had to do it tonight. I see the chairman here from Jamestown. I have been sitting next to the representative, and we have gone through this. And if you read the Jamestown Press, we're a little bit behind. Because when they gave a year's report on the progress of their schools, this was one of the things that they highlighted as accomplishment. Now, this has been going long enough. I've talked with you, Billy, about it. You brought out your figures. You want to go back five years. But it comes a time when you have to do something for expediency. <clears throat> and if they have to have it for Thursday, I really regret abstaining. And I'm going to change my vote to not to support your vote, but I needed to say something before that that you did <clears throat> not give me a chance to do, Mr. Chair. So if it's... A permissible with the chair, I would like to change an extens extension to a no on the last vote. Is that permitted? Please record Mrs. Benson's vote as a no. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. Benson. So yes, Mr. Mudge. This rate 
you've put in here before we vote on this, okay? What, what's happened to the bond rate cost, number one? Number two, and this is why I wanted to have further discussions. For example, do we realize in this rate here that Jamestown's paying a rate this year, or I guess this is for fiscal year 12, Mr. Chairman? They're paying a fiscal year 12 rate based on fiscal year 9 information. So all our raises for our teachers aren't in there. Benefits aren't in there. None of that cost is in there. All you have to do is look at the documentation. This rate table is based on fiscal year 2009 data, which is also a violation of the contracts because we should be using, even on the creek, fiscal year 10 data. So just clearly look at that. Another violation of the contract. And we're actually saying to the North Kingstown residents, We'll charge Jamestown with the price of what teachers and costs were in 2009, but in 2012, you know, you can pay, you know, the, the difference, the inflation and the cost and everything else. Bill, can I comment on that? Yes. <clears throat> to your surprise, I'm going to agree with you. Yes, I agree also. Okay? <laughs> however, right. however, we have to live with the terms of the contract that's in effect. Now, if you don't like the terms of the contract in effect, that's okay. All right? We have to live with that contract until its expiration or it's negotiated for a change. Now, we yes. can't change it in the middle unless both sides agree. Well, then how come this the chairman, only thing we don't that have a asked, bond cost rate in there, which is in the contract? You know, Bill, we had this discussion last night yeah. at the town council meeting, and you didn't like the answer you got last night. You haven't liked the answer that you've gotten for the last eight years on this. Excuse me. That's not going to change, Bill. Excuse what, me. Excuse me just a second. What we really need to do, Bill, is between now and November 1st is to negotiate a contract that is fair to both sides and, and change what can be changed legally as well as by agreement. Now, all we need to talk about tonight is the tuition, not the faults in the contract. Well, I, again, I'm telling you, I'm suggesting to you specifically this violates the contract provision. These numbers do not reflect fiscal year 10 costs. And that's a disingenuous act for the taxpayers of North Kingstown. Uh, we'd like to have Superintendent okay. to address Number your two. question. Let's, let's go one question at a time, Bill, please. We had talked a few minutes back about how we set the rate and how historically it's been through insight data, which is two years in the rears. With UCOA in our talks this fall, we had said once UCOA comes online fully, which to date it is not online fully in Rhode Island, would be one year in the rears. It's not possible to be in the actual fiscal year, as you know. Historically, it always has been two years in the rears via insight. That's how it's always been. Well, I understand that, but we still have the fiscal year 10 data. Why aren't we using the fiscal year, fiscal year cost data, like the cost of the teacher, a high cost, whatever it is, okay, in the rates? We're not doing that. So they're getting a discount on the rates that are three years old. Number two. Okay, we are not charging them any longer with this rate you're proposing a penny for the bond in the high school. It's right here. We used to charge six hundred and ten dollars, which I disagree with, per year, at least in O in O eleven, okay? And look, it's zero. Zero. And let me finally say is I totally disagree with our legal staff. I don't see a piece of paper in front of me today, except this agreement here it was signed by the chairman of the school committee. Okay, is there another one that extends this I and it was made public? Okay. Okay. And was it voted on in public? Yes. It was voted on at the meeting. At which meeting? December 16th. It wasn't at the meeting that I was on, and I was on the school committee. How dare you? You signed something December 16th for a school committee that had, you had no right to sign? I didn't sign anything. Well, who signed it? You signed something December 16th for a school committee. And you were on the committee, and it was. Yeah? I got one signed the 26th of October with Larry Cerisi. And it's. We have the That's absolutely incorrect. Absolutely incorrect. Well, who's this? Richard Welch, oh, Richard Welch signed this agreement. 
And you didn't bring this to the school committee's attention, sir? How dare you? How I, did, dare I didn't you? sign anything that wasn't approved by the school committee. You are absolutely incorrect. That's despicable. Right here in front of us. You have signed the document, part, okay, it was in agreeing the consent. to it was part an of extension. The school committee meeting. It was approved at a school committee meeting. We don't have the minutes because it was approved at a school committee meeting. We were told by council, okay. Point of order, Mr. Chairman, point of order. Can we please not have accusations and comments about someone being despicable when we don't have the information in front of us? I'd like to see whether Mr. Mudge was present at that meeting, whether that occurred at a meeting. At this point in time, we are looking at the tuition rate. And, and do we have the superintendent's recommendation on the table? You know, this is on its own. I, I do, and I apologize. <coughs> but here's the thing that really bothers me is, is that we had already had an extension to the first of the year. And that extension said Jamestown had until January 1st of this year. They could have, uh, they could have made their option then. So what, what you're saying is before they'll make their option, they want to know what the rate's going to be for next year. And that's not what the contract's all about. There is no, there is nothing that says the date that we should approve the rate. And by the way, I defy anybody to tell me whether the school committee approved the fiscal year 10 rate with Jamestown and the fiscal year 11 rate. I have seen no documentation that I've asked for that. So what's so important about this rate when the school committee didn't approve the 10 and 11 rate? Okay. Excuse so me. we have an, enough information, and, I, and, if, and if Jamestown I was going to ask that this be put off for a couple of weeks until we could square this away, okay, and I think that Jamestown could work with this. We love the kids from Jamestown. It has nothing to do with them, obviously, and we welcome them here. Okay, but Bill. But we don't if, have all the data. Bill, okay. Now, <clears throat> you were at this meeting, and on page 6 of the meeting minutes on December 14th, uh, regarding the Jamestown contract, a motion was made by Larry Cerisi to authorize Richard Welch to sign the extension of a memorandum of agreement seconded by Melvoy Benson, and it passed 6-0, Bill. No abstentions. It passed 6-0. Okay. Can I have a motion on the, on the superintendent's may, recommendation, please? Sir? May, I, may I also add to that? No, you're all done, Bill. Okay. No, time out. Time out. You're all done, Bill. He didn't you say said what, enough things tonight. There was never a reference to this October 26th. Okay. Addendum. Bill, you've accused okay. me of something that, you know, you didn't know what you were talking okay. about, like some no. of the other things you've said tonight. Now, sir, you're all done. it was the October 26th. Bill, you're out of order. To. We never saw that. Sir. <laughs> okay. Mrs. Avizano. I'd like to make a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation. Can I have a second, please? On the tuition rate. A second, that. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second on accepting the recommendation by the superintendent for the Jamestown tuition. Um, May I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Melvoy Benson? Yes. Me at the rest. William Mudge? No. Kimberly Page? Yes. Joe Thompson? Yes. Richard Welch? Yes. Linda Avanzado? Yes. Motion passed? Motion passes. Five to one. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Superintendent, would you please move to the budget? That just cost North Kingstown $300,000. At this point, I will have to defer my presentation till the 18th as I have uh, eight minutes. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, because I know you need to catch a, a train to get out of town before the snow, um, thank you very much for your attendance tonight. I know your, your thoughts are elsewhere. Um, please go with our uh, good wishes. Thank you. And our prayers, Mr. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Benson. I would like to uh, make a motion due to the conditions of the weather, and we all should be getting home, that we overlook the, we skip the consent agenda and go from unfinished business to new business. I see we have some citizens out here tonight, and I think they deserve to know where we are going with this. Okay. Do you have a particular item in new business? Uh, F. Item F. Okay. Is out, it, is, out to be it. Okay. Is there any objection to moving to item F in new business? Yes. I object. One roll objection. Roll call. Uh, we don't need a roll call. Um, there's only one objection. Um, then let's go to the discussion of the uh, 
the out <coughs> outplacement bids for the food services, mini buses, janitorial services, and outside grounds. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. As you know, this is a year for the contract with some of the people in this. And in order to do our job, we have to give a firm yes and no to all of these items. We've had a lot of discussion, and some of us who've been on the school committee before, it is very well known that we are not for outsourcing. And I have several reasons why. I won't go into them tonight. But I want to say to you people out there, this is not a self-fulfilling prophecy of the things that you were told if certain things didn't happen on this committee. This is not a self-fulfilling prophecy that went on during the last time. And I think some of you know what I'm talking about. This is something that should be taken care of. And I make a motion that to outsource and have all of these new bids put back away and give our attorney the permission to go on with the contracts that are due so, she could, so that the, P, uh, the bargaining units can go into contracts. <clears throat> Is there a second for Mrs. Benson's motion? Is that the correct motion, uh, Mr. Oh, yeah, Mr. I'm Wilkes. sorry. You are right. Yes, it's discussion only. So there is no motion tonight, Mrs. Benson. The, the vote and discussion will continue to the next meeting. I make a motion that the vote continue to the next meeting and that it will be put on the agenda. Thank you. That the reason it's put on the agenda to give us some time to get some more information as to why some of these were put there, not why, but a more information into the point that have you done a town time study on food service? Have you done a time study on minibuses? And please, don't make it all with Blue Cross. We sitting here have to have Blue Cross. I don't have to have it, thank God that that man of mine wasn't, didn't have sense enough to get out of that Navy. <laughs> but those of you sitting there, so these decisions will not be made on that, and that we'll discuss it at the next meeting. Is there any other comments on <clears throat> the item, uh, discussion for out-service bids? What is the whispering about? Say it so I can hear it. Uh, what I said was, is this is a work session, so if there's anyone who wanted to comment on it, we have to allow time for um, public comment because it's a work session. But I wanted to make sure that we covered the school committee first. Did uh, you understand my motion? Would the secretary be my motion <coughs> back? I think Mrs. somewhere Benson, it's right. there is we're, no we're under discussion, so uh, under new business, there's, it's discussion tonight. Uh -huh. And the we put, if you remember, this was under new business, items are put down for you to discuss and then move to old business to actually vote on, so the committee will see them twice. So your motion to say no would actually happen in two weeks. Tonight it would just be a discussion. There's no voting on this item tonight. Thank you. It's under new business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bill, you have your hand up. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the, 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 the out to bid. Are these... That's the, the question. Uh, Why was that on there? Excuse me, Mrs. Benson, would you let Mr. Much talk? Yes, I will. Are, are these uh, uh, issues that you're considering to put out the bid, or are they already prepared and going out the bid? The, the discussion was to have to talk whether or not the committee felt that any one or all of these items be put out on an RFP to get bids to see whether or not Thank you. they should be. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Ms. Mrs. Benson? If the discussion... <coughs> is to see whether these items would be put out on an RFP. I make a motion that we can't make a motion, but I, what can we do? And talk about <laughs> it. Discussion. You seem to be changing stoplights every time you go up Post Road. Mrs. Benson, Mrs. Benson, we, 
That's why I need your help. You're the school committee's attorney. Right. You have the knowledge, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, I understand. If you remember, we talked about the fact that the, we, we had to put these on the agenda so that we could get a, a, the feelings of the committee as to how they wanted to move with ESP negotiations. And basically, if any of these four are going to be considered, if we're ever going to consider to privatize them, before we get to negotiations, we need to do an RFP. So what we talked about was the fact that we had to put them on the agenda <clears throat> so that the committee could have a discussion as to whether they wanted them to go to RFP or not, and then they could give the superintendent, myself, and whoever else is going to be on the negotiating committee a clear understanding as to where you want to go with ESP. As we said, if you have no intention of ever going to, if you have no intention of privatizing these, then we need a vote of the committee, and that will take place at the next meeting. Tonight you're just going to talk about it, to tell us don't waste your time, don't waste your money, and don't waste your effort because it's not going to happen. So tonight is the discussion as to whether or not um, when this comes up for a vote next meeting, you want these privatized or not. Tonight is the discussion. Thank you, Mrs. Carroll. Kim? Well, I, I consider our employees in all these areas very valuable, so I, I'm a little leery of taking any of these out to vote. I know that the superintendent was going to make a, a recommendation on this, and, um, and, and I was wondering if Mr. Roger was um, prepared to, to, to do that or if, or if, he's, if he's not, and, and that's fine. But that would be, you know, where I would start the conversation is I certainly don't want to do all four. Um, I would um, want to hear some of the rationale behind um, each one of them. I, I think I've said very publicly to, to Trish Cawley that I would not outsource our food services. So I would want to hear his rationale behind the other three. And um, I'm leaning towards saying, no, I wouldn't do that, but I would like to know the rationale. Uh, is it Mr. Thompson? When we do get the uh, instructions from the superintendent, uh, I also am <coughs> leaning in the direction of doing one because I think that's what the, the taxpayers have asked us to do, but I don't want to do a complete bloodletting on this thing. So I'm looking forward to getting next week when we talk. I would like to hear the superintendent talk about which one and, and why that, that he would choose or put them in some kind of priority order because I'm leaning toward voting for one. Okay. Mrs. Avizado? I would just concur with some of the comments made by Kim, and I think this is an area, obviously, we need to be very careful um, and very slow and cautious in our uh, movement on this because we do value all of our employees in all of these areas. is isn't something we particularly want to look at, any of them, um, but I think everybody's aware of the kind of pressures that the school, this school district and many others are under. And at our budget meeting last night, the town council outlined some of those. Um, and every year, it just seems like the crunch gets worse and worse. I, I feel like we have to do our due diligence and gain information. Uh, I don't think that necessarily leads to uh, a blanket decision here. And I do think we need to hear from the superintendent about it. But I, I don't think we can afford to ignore either because we've got so many pressures on the school system and we've got to preserve our educational programs as well. So. I think there's a balancing that's necessary here. We need to hear from uh, Dr. Thornton next meeting. Mrs. Benson. Um, you're absolutely right, Mrs. Abizano. And in balancing, I would like to state that uh, on the next agenda, and working on the budget, if this is the right time, or should I come in the office or should I contact you to see if I can get permission to put it on? We have more <coughs> than the lowest salaried people, the lowest salaried people in our administration and working in the school department that needs to be looked at. And if Mrs. Carroll will repeat again what she was seeking tonight, that is what I was seeking. Repeat it again. That's our attorney. Okay. Mr. Well, yes? Go ahead. If when we negotiate with ESP, we are going to consider privatizing any of these four groups, prior to starting that negotiation, 
we need to have gone out to an RFP so we have something to compare it to. Mm -hmm. In other words, how do we negotiate that we're going to, for example, privatize food services if we don't have an RFP that shows how we could do it cheaper than with our own people? So what I'm looking for from the committee, actually the superintendent is looking for from the committee, is direction from the committee. Do you want to consider privatizing any of these four? If you do, then we need to go out for an RFP right now to have the numbers to consider. If you don't want to consider privatizing any of these, then we certainly don't want to waste anybody's money and time and effort to develop an RFP and then to put it out to bid. So we need direction from the committee. Are we thinking of privatizing? If yes, then we go to an RFP. If not, then it comes off the table and we don't discuss it and it's not up for negotiations when we negotiate the ESP contract. Okay, I'm gonna ask if there's anyone <coughs> that wants to speak public comment. Mr. Um, Mayor, question. I, I yes, Mr. Munch. I haven't said a thing. Oh. I've been waiting patiently to address <laughs> this issue. Okay, Mr. Much. First of all, I, I know not being on the committee, not knowing what's happened. Has the committee appointed a subcommittee to negotiate? Or who's we? Who's negotiating the committee? Who's negotiating this contract? Maybe if you had attended the executive session, I know you were unable to, You, we could talk about that. Okay. All I'm asking for, do we, uh, are we going to have a school committee, subcommittee, uh, you know, participate in the negotiations? That should be public information. Negotiations of what, Bill? Of the ESP contract. Yes. There will be a committee. Okay. Well, that, that's why I'm sure we can announce that, but I just but of course, that's got kinda, nothing to do with this item. Well, I kind of did because if we kind of, we're asking things to happen before the subcommittee's even been formed to uh, make a recommendation on what they want to do with these, and that's what the subcommittee would be doing. The school committee discussed it tonight in executive session. Well, I know if they had discussed it in executive session, but now you've got it on the agenda to look at X, Y, Z, or Q. So it looks like things are moving on quickly without the subcommittee ever being formed. That's all I'm saying. This is discussion Thank you. Only. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this subject only? The four items, food service, minibuses, janitorial, or outside grounds. Sandra Blankenship, 103 Dodge Street, um, president of NKESP. I feel like I'm in deja vu here, to be honest with you, and uh, thank you, Ms. Benson, for s speaking up for us. Uh, very much appreciated. I have to say one thing. Uh, a statement was made that you have to do RFPs before negotiating with us if you so choose to have the conversation about privatizing to find out if you can deliver it cheaper. All right. I have one thing to say tonight. Obviously, I will prepare something more if you decide to go forward and, and bring more community with me at that time. Cheaper doesn't you know, you don't always get what you pay for when you go cheaper. We deliver excellent service to this community, this school community. We have a number of veteran people in all four categories that have given their work career to this community. Very veteran people. And I do know in your heart of hearts that you do care about those people, and I know that you respect us and you believe that we do a good job. So I guess what I say to you is, when you go to make that vote, realize that. Look at the community surrounding you and realize that they've been there, they've had those discussions. Some of them even took the road and ended up coming back to something that wasn't outsourced that was more in-house because the delivery is personal and those people in this community, my members, my ESP members, when they go into those buildings, they take it personally, all right? They, it's not just a job to most of us. We spend 
a good deal of hours of our daily lives in these buildings, servicing children in this community and loving every minute of it, right from bus service to the classroom to the cleaning of these buildings to the delivery of service after school hours. Event after event happens in these schools, all our schools. What's going to happen to that if you let this go? So, you know, I just, I just plead with you to please think about those things when you go, you know, the next, whether it be the next meeting or whenever you decide that this vote is going to be. In your discussions, don't just let it be about a bottom line. And I know how difficult the budget is for you to deal with. Believe me, I have to have those talks constantly with the superintendent and the assistant superintendent about a lot of different line items in the budget. But if we do work together somehow, we can make this happen. Outsourcing is not the answer. Thank you. Sandy, if you'd just wait just a moment. <clears throat> we had this discussion uh, two years ago. Yes, and, you asked, and you asked why then, yes. okay? And I'll repeat what I said then that we need to know where we are relative to the rest of the world to do certain jobs, okay? And in fairness to both sides, the employees that we have now and to our taxpayers, as well as consideration for the educational plan that we have, we need to do our job and do what, it, what we would call due diligence, to see what the marketplace is, see where we are, and then make a justification whether or not it's not going to be just dollars and cents. It hasn't been. It wasn't when we did the ESP contract two years ago. Mm -hmm. But I think that we owe it to the taxpayers to have a good idea. This committee needs to have a good idea, a firm <coughs> idea of what the service is worth in dollars and cents, and then what allowances could we, should we make for all the things that you said. Mm -hmm because I think everyone on this committee has the same feelings of what you said. But we, we need to do that in order to justify to everyone, the taxpayers, the workers, the students, that we've done our job. Okay, I so. Think, I think I acknowledge that. So if you, if you can allow us to, to do that, okay, get the RFP, get the information, and allow us to make the judgment, then certainly we will consider everything that you said. We did it the last time, and I think we will we, we'll still do that, mm -hmm. okay? Appreciate my position in this, however, as well, please. When you start to speak uh, about going out for RFPs, obviously I have people that I represent that all of a sudden all the stress starts to happen, mm -hmm. all right? The, the, the morale is just incredibly low right now out there for a number of reasons, not just, you know, not just the RFPs, but for another number of reasons, and I will acknowledge that. Uh, there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of things going on uh, behind the scenes that erode that. However, I have to deal with the fact that, once again, they feel like, here we go again. And that's exactly what the comments are out there. Here we go again. I'm not sure that's going to change things. You know? The economy being what it is, the but plight of the taxpayer who has to pay the bill, it all needs to be considered. With all due respect, it still leaves my folks feeling like, am I going to have a job? And uh, that's scary and that's stressful. It's, I understand. And, you know, it's like sort of feeling beat up all the time. I understand. Believe me, I understand. Okay. Mrs. Benson? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Uh, Blankenship, for such stirring remarks. And I'll have to agree with you. When people are under stress, they cannot do their job. And it always seems, I've been in this town a long time, Mr. Welch, and was with the school department, it always seems before I got on the school committee. Whenever any time come, this is not a new game. Go back to Bert Colbert days. Somebody sitting here remember. This is not a new game to the members of the committee. It always starts 
with the lowest pay. I disagree with that, Mrs. Benson. And that's your privilege. Thank and you. And I want to finish. That's your privilege. And it always starts there where we can save. We never look clearly <coughs> into 100 fairway over there. <laughs> Everybody, we hire one person, then next thing you know, you got another person helping him, you got another person helping him. And these people, some of them, have been on these jobs longer than some of us have been in this town. Okay, this is public comment. If we could just keep it short, Mr. Mr. Mudge. Uh, Mr. Welch, you will not restrain my talking. The people went to the polls to vote for me just like they did you. And I'm going to speak. Is that clear? <coughs> I'm not stopping because you <coughs> say so. But I'm stopping because we haven't answered the question that our attorney said for us to do. There is no need to go out for an RFP. And if the secretary will read my motion over. There is no motion, Mrs. Benson. I know that. <laughs> Thank you. The suggestion. And if she will read it back, we can soon bring this to an end. Could you reread what I stated after the attorney stated her? No. It's, it's been three times. If you want to hear it again, please wait until after me. You're not a dictator. <clears throat> Mr. Much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Blankenship, first let me say, I have the highest respect for our working staff. From janitorial led up to the teachers and administrators. You know, we, we all work, we work hard, and we deserve a good day's pay for a good day's work. <clears throat> With that said, I think there are some things that need to be looked at, like in any organization. We ought to be lean and mean, if you may, and that type of thing. Excuse me, Mr. Mudge, just a second. Yes. Mr. Mudge has the floor. If you would please, you expect people not to talk when you're talking. Please allow the same for the other members of this committee. Please continue, Mr. Mudge. And that goes so, for writing notes also. It, uh, it is appropriate, in my opinion, to look at, for example, uh, teaching staffs, uh, any particular function, a janitorial function, buses or anything else, to ensure that we, we have the right staffing. You know, not at the state house, you know, the federal, you know, and it's, we have 10 guys doing a one-man job with the highway department or something like that. We should look at our, our job and, you know, what our staffing is. And if we, you know, if, if experts, and I think they have, for example, for this high school in the past, came in and said, you know, we, we should have a certain staffing with certain equipment, obviously, right? And if we have that, you know, that's fine. And, and, and that's what we should be doing. But let me let you rest assured. I am not going to support anything that would that would substitute for uh, an employee for our employees on the basis that the new coming or the incoming employee would, would lose their benefits. I have a value. I think that our our school committee members, I think our administration, and I think the good help of our town deserve benefits. And if somebody says, "Well, I can bring somebody else in that doesn't get benefits," and ergo we have a cheaper contract. I'm not supporting that. Okay, so can you do, do a good job? And, and, and hopefully, you know, we'll get through this thing and it will be efficient for the, for the town and the community. Thank you. And thank you. Um, and I, I guess I, I want to leave you with the, just reminding you also that the ESP and the school committee and the school department, we've always managed to come out in negotiations. Um, you know, I believe feeling that both sides came out with something, okay? Um, and the other piece of that is including my food service folks who, you know, stepped up to the plate. We restructured, the union agreed to that. We downsized, the union agreed to that. There's been many, many changes in, in my organization at all the different levels over the last, what, five years or so? Six. Six years to, you know, to make sure that we at least showed, you know, that we were trying, you know, to put out, you know, or, or at least negotiating good faith, let's put it that way. All right. 
So my hope is that um, if these talks continue, you know, then it's dealt, we're dealt with in fairness. That's all I ask. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to have anything to say on this subject? Hi, John Bus Garden, 96 Daniel Drive. Um, I have a little bit of, uh, of peripheral experience with this. I've seen it happen a couple different times where facilities have decided to outsource, but part of the agreement was that the folks that were on staff were brought on by the company that won the outsourcing bid. So there, there might be a way to keep as many people happy as possible. Uh, some, I don't know if everybody does it, but just might be worth, uh, when you're talking about the RFP, to see if they can give it to you in a couple of different ways. With their people, if you're keeping the people here, and as our folks uh, retire, then they, are, then they have the right to bring people on, you know, within their company. Because typically they're expanding their business. So they, they may not even have the workforce to walk in and to do it seamlessly. And quite frankly, you probably don't want to have that because you want people that are familiar with how the place operates anyway. So. Just, I think that's, that's a given. Uh, if we got to that point, I think that would be very necessary, just for our own purposes. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay. I guess then we can move on. But let's <coughs> get back to the agenda then. Uh, if we can go to the consent, oh, the consent agenda. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, we didn't do correspondence yet. I'm sorry. We jumped all around. Okay. Uh, is there any correspondence tonight? I have some. Uh, okay, I'll try to be quick. Um, I received correspondence from Stony Lane saying that Geography B finalists were Justin um, Moaning or Manning and um, um, from Mr. Skagg's class and Mary Beth Clark from Mrs. Johnson's class who was the runner-up. I also received correspondence from um, Principal Tom or Dr. K Tom Kenworthy that the NK Rotary um, student and teacher were announced. The teacher was um, Amy Messerlian. Messerlian. Messerlian, thank you. <laughs> and the student was Eliza Drew in 11th grade. So congratulations to them. Also, the, um, the NK boys soccer team was awarded the sportsmanship for the Rhode yeah. Island Scholastic League for Division I teams this fall. Um, I received correspondence from the Wickford um, PTO, and um, they were thanking Mr. Buzz and his students for the work on the building sign that is new, that if you go past the Wickford Middle School, that is put up. And they were also um, talking about the, um, in their newsletter, they talked about the annual turkey trot, which generated $3,700. And oh. congratulations to Mrs. Berg, who was their head um, teacher great. turkey, and to Mark Halloran, who was their head student turkey. <laughs> Can I just ask you, do you do we know what they were going to use the money for? Oh, they, yes, they gave the money to the food pantry. Isn't that, so the North that's Kingston. a wonderful thing. Yes. Yes. Um, also, I received correspondence from um, Aaron, or Aaron Thomas that last night at Mount Pleasant, our basketball team played there, and Rob Hazard scored 1,000 points. Not last night. Yeah. No, we didn't score a thousand last night. No, no, not one game, but he scored his thousandth point. You're right. He did not score. We did not win that big. Very high scoring game. Um, I also received uh, correspondence, I think as we all did, from Mr. Avedizian uh, as to the juniors, um, junior all state mixed chorus and band. Uh, I'll go through those quickly. The singers were, um, and I apologize ahead of time for any mispronounced names. For the chorus, um, the singers were Nina. Um, Diepenbach, Kayla Johnson, who was number one, Dana Larkin, Savannah Martin, <coughs> Megan McGee, Carlos Aldretti, um, Nathan Evans, Nicholas Hammond, Sam Jenkins, Megan O'Brien, Miranda Johnson, Sarah Cavalieri, and for all state um, treble chorus, Mercedes Rodriguez, Chelsea Olson, Emily Auger, so congratulations, um, Emily Butterball, Kendra Fry, Danielle Garapi, and Laura um, Venace. For the All-State Junior Orchestra, we had Megan um, Banfield-Basin, Mason Dubois-Bass, um, Martha Edwards-Viola, viol for Viola, 
um, I'm sorry, I was giving the Catherine Levin for viola, <coughs> Megan Riley for cello, Catherine Riley, who was the number one violin, Emma Vogel, who was the number one tuba, Sam Yeager, Hannah Bax um, Baxter, Olivia Baxter, uh, Lydia Segoris, who was um, for violin and trombone, Nathan Ackerman, Kate um, Spitalnik, Mason Hyde, Sarah Pastor. For all state um, symphonic band, we had Anna Yeager and Jesse Facey. And for all state concert band, we had Felix Torres, Bethany Lindenblad, Stieg Lindenblad, and Benjamin Sawyer. Can I just make a comment on that? Yes. Um, you know, it's a tremendous um, uh, feeling to have such wonderful music program <coughs> and such wonderfully <coughs> talented music uh, students here. Um, I had the opportunity to attend uh, both concerts here just prior to Christmas. Um, these, uh, these kids always amaze me how talented they are. Uh, one of them, a uh, young man, Mr. Kaplan, has been all state four years in a row um, on the, the viola. They're, um, they're just, the, the program here is just tremendous. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the important aspects that we don't pay maybe enough homage to. Um, we have walls out there covered with plaques about the, uh, the, the athletic achievements in this, uh, this high school. But when it comes to the arts and the uh, uh, music, um, they go unheralded a lot. And I, I just want to say everyone in this community should be really proud of the music program that we have in this school district. You're here. Two Thank other you. correspondence that I received, and I'll do this quickly because I know we're at time. Um, we had our scholastic art competition and our art and photography winners. Um, the silver key went to drawing to Colin Fagan. The silver key went in drawing to Andrea Matera. And the gold key for painting went to Catherine, or Catherine um, Peralt. In the photography, we had our silver key was photography was um, Catherine Peralt. Our gold key for photography was Madeline Rizzo. And also a gold key in photography went to Emily Roberts. And the last thing I have is um, that I received correspondence from the Board of Regents that they are starting their, their public comment on the proficiency-based graduation requirements for high school. And there are um, the two that are closest to us at, um, well, not really close, but there is one on January 18th, Tuesday at 5 p.m. up at the um, CCRI Flanagan campus in Lincoln. Um, as I said, that's not really close. But the closer one is then on Wednesday, January 19th at South Kingston High School, again at 5 p.m., that if anybody wishes to comment, I'm going to try to make one of those to comment. Is that on the, three, the tiers of diploma? Yes, that is on the okay, tiers yeah, of diploma that they're asking for that. comments. Yep. Uh, Mrs. Avatado? Yep, just really briefly, we all received many, many letters from students in democracy class, and they were just fabulous. Great Every, the, part of their projects for democracy fair, which is probably going to be canceled for tomorrow night because oh it is going to be Monday yes. okay it's been, it's been rescheduled to Monday oh. and the students will you, Kat, you did say Monday right Monday's a holiday, Monday's a holiday. I'm sorry oh okay Monday's a holiday it's been rescheduled what what day was it Kathy we don't know. I thought it was going to be Thursday oh okay I'm sorry <laughs> okay we better that's, that's to be announced later but um maybe we should have that on the website but 13. In any case, the students all wrote to us with different ideas and different projects that they were thinking of putting in place, and they were just some excellent ideas, and the future legislators, obviously, maybe future school committee members, who knows. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Benson? Um, I'm sure all of us read the program this morning about the young man that um, you mentioned about the basketball? Oh, Rob Hazard. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I would like to point out that Rob Hazard has been a student in North Kingstown schools from kindergarten. And the sports announcer commented about how well spoken he was, if you heard it. And it was mentioned also the day in the school. And it's nice to see kids that accomplish things like that, and as critical as the press is today to have someone speak about how well-spoken he, he is, that isn't a, a tribute to all of our education. And incidentally, Mr. Chair, he's always lived in crossroads. I'm sure there's some, some point to that, but go ahead. Joe? 
Uh, I got a magazine from the uh, Rhode Island Blood Center, and I discovered from reading it that uh, our high school won the first place in the previous blood drive they just conducted. And there were two people involved in that. One was Linda Twardowski. I forget who the second one was. If somebody knows, they could say it. But congratulations to them, most uh, of any school in that particular drive. Thank you, Joe. Uh, that being the end of the correspondence, um, disclosure of executive uh, session votes. Um, on January 4th, 2011, motion unanimously passed by all members present to go into executive session. Motion passed to seal the executive session minutes of January 4th, 2011. 4 2 with Kimberly Page and William Mudge voting no. Motion unanimously passed to adjourn executive session and go into open session. Mr. Chairman? Yes. This is kind of procedural more than anything. I thought about it after that, you know, meeting we had the 4-2 vote. I'm saying we voted to seal minutes, yet we never saw the minutes of the meeting. Okay? So I guess what I'm saying is... Uh, they weren't produced if, yet. Huh? They weren't produced yet because there was that, was that meeting that we were yeah, sitting but Yeah, but we're, we're, uh, isn't this on the agenda to vote for tonight? So, so no, are we going to no, vote no, again no, tonight? No. No, this is not voting tonight. This is disclosure of the vote. Disclosure of the vote to seal the previous minutes. Of the meeting of the anyway, 14th. Now I'm going to read tonight. Okay. Now, I guess my point is, I never saw what the meeting minutes were. Well, you don't until the following meeting because the clerk hasn't had a chance to type them yet. No, she said it was the 14th I'm talking about. No, we were sitting in the meeting and you voted no to seal. We, and they were revealed at tonight's me executive session meeting where we, we approved we them. So, okay, so I can get a copy of the minutes of the meeting then? I guess all I'm saying. No, what you can do is you can go to the office and read them in the office as they were sealed. So I can't get a copy? That's right. Who can remember? As a school committee member, they're, if they're sealed, they stay in the office, the administration okay, so office. Okay, thank you. You can go to the office and read them. Thank you. Thank you. And then tonight's executive session, Linda Avanzato moved Mel Benson second to open the executive session. Kim Page moved Linda Avanzato seconded to approve the minutes of November 9, 2010. Then Linda Avanzato moved Dick Wells seconded the motion to approve the minutes of November 23, 2010. Linda Avanzato moved Kim Page second to close the executive session. And then Linda Avanzato moved and Mel Benson second to seal the minutes of the executive session. Thank you. Okay, okay. moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, uh, are there any exceptions to uh, anyone want to pull out of the consent agenda for discussion? Make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I abstain. Did you get that, uh, Laureen? Yes. Uh, yes. One abstention. Everyone else one, was in favor. Oh, five. One abstention. Mr. Mr. Mudge abstained. abstained. Okay. Moving on to unfinished business uh, and possible action. Uh, school committee budget. I think <coughs> we got to wait to uh, for the superintendent, unless somebody wants to discuss something on the school committee budget, which. I would, Mr. Chairman. Which we don't have yet, as of yet. We don't have it as well, yet. Well, this is the 211 budget. It's the present. Item A. Oh, right. Okay. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> two things. Yes, sir. It's two separate questions. It says funding formula update. I assume that they're talking about the funding formula update for the 2011 budget. That's what it says. <clears throat> You're saying no, I believe, I believe that was going to be for the fiscal year 12 budget. That's correct. So this has been mis... So it's, it, this it's, it's wrong on the agenda, Ned? Yeah. Let me check the agenda, but I, I believe that's... Yeah, the, the agenda yeah, says 2010-2011. Right. So we voted on something that wasn't on the agenda? We didn't vote on anything. We didn't vote on, didn't vote on anything. We voted on the funding formula. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't. Where the wishing formula for Jamestown is a separate... That, that's this different issue. This is statewide funding formula. Different well, uh, that, agenda item. Uh, okay, so this was oh. the statewide funding formula? Okay, so I misunderstood that. I thought we were on funding formula. Mr. Chairman, okay, with respect to the 211 budget, 
I would like to make a motion, okay, that any monies we collected in 2011 as well as 2010 from Jamestown for the purpose of, of, of paying off the bond debt, and I believe this year and last year, we can look at the numbers, it comes to about $300,000. I am making a motion that we direct the superintendent of schools to uh, forward that money to the town as a, uh, as a, to put into the debt service account, uh, as was discussed at the school committee meeting last night and as articulated by the town manager and the uh, solicitor uh, who says that that action is required, that the school committee, excuse me, the town manager cannot take those monies that must be directed from the, com from the committee. So I'm making a motion that we pay, uh, we transfer over to the debt service fund any of those monies that we collected for 2010 or 2011. Thank you. Is there a second on his motion? I second that one. Is there any discussion on this motion? <coughs> Ms. Page? Well, as I understand the purpose of your motion, and while I agree that we need to have some sort of a formalized agreement, I believe last night that the town manager and her <coughs> attorney addressed that and stated that they didn't need to have the money taken there, that, um, that how it is set up where the money is collected, it is put in the town account, the town account then moves it over to us, that everybody in the town council was fine with that and that there wasn't any discrepancy in how we account it. If we want something more formalized, I would agree to that with the town council after a discussion. But I don't think that tonight that we want to, and I, and I would question whether we could do this under the, the, the agenda even. Um, so that would be, because I don't, I think we have that, have that spelled out better and that is not really on the agenda. So I have that disagreement with the motion and I think that we could do it in a better way. So that is, would be my other disagreement if the motion was valid. Mrs. Avisato? I would definitely, I would concur with all of those comments. Um, and I had asked a number of different questions in writing to the, um, and I'm going to forget her title now, finance director of the town, Trish Sunderland, and I sent her several emails and she did respond. And I asked her to please explain to me the process so that I could understand whether or not we were doing this properly. And she told me in writing that the way it works is Jamestown sends a check to North Kingstown School Department. We do not deposit the check in the school department account. We take the check and walk it over to the town and it goes into the town's general fund. Every penny, and the town council has affirmed this, so did the town manager. Every penny of the money that Jamestown gives us goes into the town coffers. If at that point, it's my contention, and I, and I will hold true to this no matter, regardless of what anyone says, it is the town's decision at that point if they wish to cut us by the debt service amount from that amount of money, from that particular chunk that came from Jamestown, if they wish to take it out, we absolutely can't stop them. That is their decision. And the way they've done it in the past is they've just credited that money as a portion of what they're going to fund our budget with. And then we ask for our budget to be funded at a certain level, the town council funds it. It's also, it was also said, and I concur, that it's the town's obligation to pay debt service. It's in their budget for a reason. The town is the only body that's authorized to bond, authorized to borrow money, and authorized to manage the bonds. The school committee has no uh, taxation authority and no authority to control the bonding process. So, you know, the, the, the buildings are owned by the town. We're using them, essentially. We have care, custody, and control of them under 16.2, but they're owned by the town. So therefore, it's proper for them to pay the bond out of their um, out of their money, the town's money, as long as the transactions are completely transparent, which I very much concur with Mr. Mudge that they need to be transparent so that we can see the money and the flow of the money. I think it's done appropriately that way, so I would agree with Mrs. Page's comments. Mrs. Ben Benson. Um, I agree in part with Mrs. Page's comments, and I was at the meeting last night and each one of us is going to give our interpretations as to what the town manager said. I have spoken numerous of times stating that the school committee has no taxing authority. 
So I would ask that um, that um, we would, um, it's nothing we can do about the state formula, and I think that's what we were talking about. So I suggest that this is a moot <coughs> subject until we can have a longer meeting and understanding because each one of us and who was it? Uh, I think it was one of the Supreme Court justices said, you probably know Mrs. Apisano, that you get six lawyers in a room and none of them agree on anything. So this will have to be for discussion at another time. And so let's carry it on that this is just the moot. Mr. Mr. Welch, I, I have to concur with um, Mrs. Page. This hasn't been advertised. This is too big an item to put under a 2010 school budget. It is out of order. It's not advertised, and it shouldn't be discussed tonight without a line item specific to that. No, no, come on now. No. You We've in North that. Kingston, this is a, it Mr. Says Mudge, two, may I finish, please? I'm going to finish, budget. Mr. Mudge, and I let okay. her finish. You know, I, I kind of object to the I, broadness I, of these things. Okay, that's fine. You object. <coughs> we, we have uh, an opinion from counsel, um, and, and I concur. Uh, Mr. Thompson, you had a question. I have uh, been listening to Bill's um, problems with the Jamestown, and I've kind of broken them into three problem areas. The tuition rate, which we handled tonight. The terms of the contract language, which I have been told we're going to have a subcommittee that's, that's going to start meeting on that, and I wish to be on that committee. And then there's something about the flow chart that is he, I think, well, he's gotten me thinking about it anyway as to whether that money comes over and eventually goes into an account that reduces the bond service. Because if it doesn't, then perhaps our taxpayers are paying more money than they should on that bond service. What I'm asking is get the town lawyer and the school committee lawyer to give us a written document I have that already, Mr. Thompson. showing the flow chart that the money takes in coming from Jamestown, finally into the account that pays down the school bond. Let them certify that this is the legal and proper schematic and have them automatically include that specific fund in the annual audit so the auditors can state in writing that the right amount did go where it was supposed to. I would be very pleased if I could kind of put that issue to bed. I, I don't know whether it's going into the right place or not, but I think if I got a letter from both the town and the school committee and there was a flow chart and we were to add that to the audit so that the auditor would come in every single year and say, yes, it did go into that, that would satisfy me. I don't. I can't speak for Bill. Well, that's the proper accounting, yes. Uh, Mr. Thompson, um, for your information, um, this has, legal opinion has been all <coughs> been given by both the, the town's solicitor and our attorney. It has gone before the town's audit committee. Um, the, the town's auditors have been, been made aware of it, the outside auditors. Um, and everyone except... Uh, Mr. Mudge, appears to be satisfied that uh, what is being done meets all of the criteria and that the town is getting the money. You, one thing I think that, that um, needs to be expressed is that the town council has one jurisdiction over the school committee when it comes to budget, and that's the bottom line. Hmm. And what they're agreeing to, okay, is funding our budget, okay, the expenses of the educational system here in North Kingstown. Um, they're not agreeing to any revenue of any kind. They're agreeing to pay the expenses of the education process here in North Kingstown. All of the revenues, except for federal grants, okay, uh, go directly, if not to the town, uh, through the school department to the town. We don't, we don't collect money, okay? The, the grant process is specific in nature in that it funds certain programs, like the Race to the Top. Um, that can't go to the town. That has to go to the school department to pay for certain programs. Um, so if the town is getting the money, what they do with it in the general fund, whether they're paying policemen, firemen, teachers, janitors, that's up to the town because they're agreeing to fund the bottom line on our budget. Mr. Chairman, could you help me? Yes, Mr. Much. What, did, what was said at the town council meeting last night then? What was the conclusion? Because I, take away, I took away again from that that both the town solicitor said that he and the school committee chair agreed 
that it's a ministerial action in terms of moving money that was appropriated in the school budget, which included 22 or 23, 2.1 or 2.3 million dollars in Jamestown. The town cannot touch that appropriated money. That money would go for a bill. That whatever bill it is, whether it's heat or electricity, whatever the funding is, only the town, okay, excuse me, only the school committee can direct the bill to be paid. And we had an obligation, a moral obligation also, to put money into the debt service account from Jamestown. We haven't done that. $1.6 million we didn't do. Okay. And that was the extra money that the taxpayers had to pay and the school committee spent since 2002. Bill, no matter how many people in this, in this town try to explain to you <coughs> the situation, mm -hmm. you're not willing to accept it. That's so right. the, the only thing I can say to you, Bill, is you need to find somebody of substance, like the Attorney General, like the Commissioner of Education, like the Auditor General for the State of Rhode Island to agree with you. Because we can't keep on talking okay. about this what forever, Bill. What did the solicitor Bill. say last night? Would you help me? Uh, in what essence, what he last? said was there isn't a problem, Bill. He did say it one night. He, did, he said it wasn't a problem? That's right. That's what he said. All right. So we, so we walk away from the meeting, and I'll go back to the town council, and I'll say, gee, could somebody tell me what the process is again? Because you got it wrong. Okay. All right. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Uh, I, did, I, I asked for a specific flow chart, and I said, maybe this will help us put this thing to bed. Your answer to me was, oh, well, we were there last night, and we had the one lawyer said it, and the other lawyer, and they agreed with it. If we got a written flow chart from two lawyers in this town telling us that it's going into that account that pays off the debt service, that I would like that, and it might help put this thing to I bed. I would be happy if that was the end of it. I'm not so sure that we can accomplish that, Mr. Bill. Why Mr. Can't we Mr. Get Mr. Thompson, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Carroll, could, 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 could you ask mm -hmm. for that? M Mr. Maroney, I spoke to Mr. Maroney at length today. Um, I, yes, I, I can ask. We can take care of that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, Mr. Thompson. That would be very good. Thank okay, you. thank you. Mrs. Benson. Um, I just wanted to say to the new members of the school committee, we have gone through some of this that you said and that Bill said and the others on the committee. And I remember asking Mr. Draper specifically if the money for Jamestown was a pass-through. And instead of going back, we didn't get an answer then. We didn't get an answer then. And we don't need an answer now because it was made very clearly, unless we specify where the money goes, it goes into the school's account. Am I correct, attorney? Unless we specify. Yes, And you this are is what they're asking, and this is what they want on a flow chart, and that's what the citizens want to know, because we have sent the money without any direction for the bond, and I, I'm a little bit disgusted at the way you used to be on those things about the school bond, that you couldn't give us a little bit more guidance concerning that, because that was one of your things for years, about paying the school bond. And I'm a little bit disgusted, but that's the way it is, so we're going to get a flow chart and that will put this to rest. Mr. Zagosaro? I'm a little bit If it shows the money also. ending up in the bond account, paying the bond account, if it goes somewhere else or a general fund, unspecified, I think it's then already I think we've got a problem. It's been made and very clear. The money does not go into the bond. Well, the money get, goes into the town's general coffers. The, the treasurer told me that in writing. The money goes in the, excuse going. me, I'm speaking. No. The money goes to the town, they then deposit it. Wherever they deposit it, it's their decision. If they, de if yeah. they t decide to take the bond money out of that money, great. 
If they decide to take it out of other money, great. Either way, it doesn't matter what they take it out of. It's all the same pot. And it goes into the school fund. It doesn't go into the general fund. It goes into the We're going to get this answered in writing, right? Yeah. A blow chart. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'll forward you the email that the treasurer sent to me. Just so you can see it. One at a time, please. I don't think so. Can we please move on? Okay. Appointment to the Budget Subcommittee. I need volunteers to be on the Budget Subcommittee. It can only be three. I would think we'd have an easy scoring. I'm going to suggest Mr. Mudge, and I see Mr. Thomason volunteer. I would decline. Mr. Mudge declines being on the Budget yep. Subcommittee. Well, Mr. we don't want to hear your mouth about the budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did my you homework. Cannot, you cannot hop on this uh, train when the coaches get together. Well, Ms. Benson, on, tonight I try to give you all the information on James on the Wrong floor. time, wrong and station. You know, it was, you didn't appreciate it, so why go through the effort? Okay, I'll do my You're own thing. You're going through the effort non-legally. No. You're going through the effort non-legally. Okay, Mr. Thompson, you wanted to be on the budget subcommittee? Yeah, am I it? I will volunteer for it. Can't even keep my checkbook straight, but I know reason and how to spend taxpayers' money. One more, please. What about uh, Larry? Would he be interested to attend? Well I can't this speak, I can't speak for Larry, and He's we've got to get this well done. Enough. We have to get this done by yeah. state law. Mr. Mudge, I'm not going to beg you, but you are acting just like a spoiled child. Can we agree? sit here and listen at you. You can't get on the train after it's been gone. That is just pure devilment. Listen, I, I, I declined to be on the budget. <coughs> Keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Okay. Mrs. Benson. You don't have to have three. I mean, I you can say have I two. can be on it, but I would, um, I would be willing that if somebody else wanted to attend a certain meeting, that I would step down because I am also on the policy and the wellness committee, so I, I do kind of feel like I have a full plate. This is my first time on the budget committee, and I'm going to give you full force. The, only, force, the only thing I can say, Kim, is it's, it's only from now until the end of February, you know, so it is a short term. That is a permanent committee according to state rules. Look it up tomorrow while you're at the state house. Yes, Joe. I know last year we pr provided three budgets. There was a high, medium, and low. Is that's that, what, that's what the gonna, town council asked for. Are we going to do the same this they year? They have not asked for anything. Are we going to get one or are we going to get three? Um, I think that we'll have that discussion. I can't, I can't answer you right now without the uh, superintendent being here. Already. But the discussion last year was they asked us at the joint meeting for that. Right. Okay. They did not ask us for that. Uh, Mr. President, would you, when you have your discussions with the superintendent, would you suggest that we do not make th three but we do have a plan A and a plan B, and we will work to keep all of them within the cap because we have to work with the state cap. But we'll have two alternatives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could you convey that to them and let me know? I, I will have the, the clerk probably let you know. Uh -huh. It should be the first one to talk to him. Okay. Okay. You're not going to be talking with him? I won't, probably won't talk to him until Friday. Okay. Well, you convey that to him when you have your meeting. Okay. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Next thing is, um, we already voted on this. I changed it. <laughs> is the CIP existing bond, future bond? Anything on that? I don't think there's anything. There's nothing on that? Nope. Okay. Uh, the next thing is the policy uh, IJNDB.2, Internet and Computer Usage Policy. Second read. Yes, this is our second read for this policy. This is basically a child internet protection policy, uh, also called a SIPA. Um, we are required by federal law to have this because of the, the usage of, of that we allow our students who are under 16 and also between 16 and 18 and over to use the internet um, and to have a policy stating what we allow them to do and what we don't allow them to do. This policy is written basically from the federal guidelines. And it was the sort of thing of we did more of a cut and paste and put in um, 
North Kingstown versus where they had. So it, it's not um, something that we just threw up out of our heads. It was basically following um, federal guidelines. We've had a first read, and we didn't on uh, December 14, 2010. So tonight's for a second read. And if there aren't any comments, then I would ask that we also have an adoption of the policy. So um, I'll make the motion that we approve the policy, and then we can discuss it from there. So I would make the motion that we approve IJNDB.2. <laughs> Second. Is there any discussion? I just wanted to thank Richard Booth for his um, assistance. He came into the meetings a couple of times and assisted Mrs. Page with that and the rest of the policy subcommittee. So I wanted to thank him for his help with that. Isn't that part of the job? Yes. Okay. These accolades for doing the job. Still, we can, we can still thank, thank people him. for doing a good job. Um, okay. We don't know what they're doing. So the, can we have a vote on the motion? Yeah, you have a second. A second. We have, we have, we, we have the second. second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it passes unanimous. Um, now we're down to new business discussion only, and, you know, the majority of this, um, of that information in that category is, um, really needs to come from the superintendent. So I would ask, if you don't mind, that we push this off. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I can I just make a couple of comments on the 12 either. budget? Yes. As a, an expectation. What, what I would like to see in a presentation from the uh, uh, school, uh, uh, the administration is, it's akin to, I think, uh, zero-based budget, if you may. What I would like to see is a budget, this year's budget, assuming that nothing changes in terms of, you know, students and people and so forth and so on. I would like to see this year's budget, uh, on all the different programs and running everything else, cost it out in terms of if we emulated everything, including population, what would the you know, increases in teachers' rates and inflation and things like that, what would it cost to run this program next year without any changes? And that, I think, would give us a good baseline to say, okay, you know, we know where we can fall within, you know, this range or another range, and it gives us a baseline of... Yes, Mrs. Spencer. The point of order is, Mr. Mudd, you were put on the committee. Excuse we me. We haven't had time to organize, I'm and you're giving us all of these things. That's why we wanted you uh, on the committee to give Ms. your Chana, expertise. You know, I, I'm just suggesting that as a start, I mean, I guess members can make comments that aren't on the budget committee, sure. okay, yes. to the committee. Please, Absolutely. please do. Okay, <laughs> and again, all, all I'm saying is, to give us a clear and understanding right. of where we are today, if we were to emulate everything today, like I buy a new car for today and I buy one next year, I know what it's going to cost. I think that will give us a tremendous you know, opportunity to, to look at the deltas and so forth and so on. I, I, I think uh, in you have a good idea. I think we agree with you, Bill. I think that um, so without you being involved in it, it, it probably <coughs> won't get done the way you want it. No, that's all right. I'll, I'm know, still going to work. And and just, and you know, I can get this done. You know, I, I, bad boy, bad boy. You know, I, and I, I think it's a, a good start, and I'll, I'll certainly, you know, pitch in and do my, my thing. My suggestion is that you participate in the, the budget subcommittee. Could, can I make another comment, Mr. Uh, I guess, I, sure. You know, what I think, what should a budget subcommittee do? And I was thinking about that the other day. Certainly a budget subcommittee doesn't make decisions for anybody. No, right. not at all. Okay, it doesn't make decisions for anyone. But I think the budget subcommittee's job is, is, and hopefully it can be easy, is it really takes all the data and it does an analysis and can be used and the committee can use this data to answer questions for other members, you know, about X, Y, Z, or Q. And it, it tries to make sure the presentation is done in any type of format that you may want. So you can get quick or good information to make good business decisions. You know, and I think, you know, most people can do that. But again, it is a tool to be used by the committee to make decisions so we have good, sound information and we base our decisions on good, you know, practical and sound information and sound data. So, you know, I, I think you can do that. And I'll, you know, uh, uh, look forward to, you know, what the, you know, the budgets yield and, and so forth and so on. So, 
uh, again, I, I don't look at it as a decision-making committee, but a support committee to the, the school committee. Okay. Mrs. Benson? Um, I just want to say that I didn't volunteer for the meeting for it to be looked at as a decision maker or anything. My thoughts about a budget committee is you iron out the different things, get different people's idea, so when we come to the public, we can show that we all agree and eliminate some of that talking. And I'm going to say it one more time. Your information is valuable. I'm sorry that you were the little boy took your ball and went home. <laughs> you still have my information. And by the way, Mr. Mrs. Benson, you misunderstood what I just said. Because it isn't that everyone it isn't that everyone, that everyone will agree. All right. will, everyone will have the right information and the same information. Okay. Point of order. Let's uh, not have these sidebars between members at the table. Let's do everything for the you, chairman, Mrs. please. As of, as of order sake. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Page. Oh, well, I, I just had a question as to um, three of the things that, that are on the agenda so that I would know, since I don't know if there'll be discussion next time. But I wanted to know if the website update, if that was going to be telling us um, more about what has been done on the website or if that was going to be more about the question period. It was, it was designed to tell you more about what's been happening lately on the website and to answer any questions people may have. Okay. My other question was the employee suggestion email. I, I, I don't understand what we were going to be. I know this for discussion only. I guess I was, is this to say should we have employees suggest an email or I'm not really sure what the topic was. It's, it's, it's in lieu of a suggestion box for the employees to put in information to come directly to the school committee for review and consideration. And it can be from anything from something that might be a, an efficiency so that we would save operational money to things that are scheduling. It could be anything that would help the school system. All too often, this was a suggestion that I made to the superintendent, uh, wanting to get the employees' input directly to the school committee. All too often, the people who push the broom, so to speak, um, get, get lost in the shuffle. They have good ideas, but an immediate supervisor, for one reason or another, doesn't think much of it or much of the employee. The, the, the suggestion goes no place. The employee decides, uh, why bother? Nobody listens to me. So if, <clears throat> if we can get all of the employees to, to really understand that this school committee um, really wants to listen to them, wants to understand what their suggestion is about, and work with them. Make sure that everybody understands that everybody has worth and importance. Their ideas should be looked at and listened to and given some value judgment by this committee. And then let us go forward and say to the administration, we believe this has merit. We would like to have the administration do it. Um, would, would they be um, signing the emails? I, mean, I think this is a good idea, but I, I just want to make sure that we would have a means of being able to get back to people well, if we had more questions. Because they would come by email, we would, it would be date stamped and we okay. would know who sent it. And that would also help to discourage uh, felonious and negative, <laughs> vulgar <laughs> it will. emails. Okay? Trying to get good value information in and then say to the, the, the employee that has the, has taken the initiative to go forward and give this, tell them that we appreciate their input, et cetera. Um, yes, Mrs. Avizano. Is your idea to put this like on the website and have yes. a place where they can? Yes. I think it's a good idea. Are you looking for a motion? Oh, no, no, it's only for discussion only. Okay. Um, Mr. Thompson. In, your, in uh, your discussion of this, it reminds me of the hotline over in Newport, and it was a phone with a message which was listened to. And the rule was, if they wanted, if they left their name, we would get back to them with our findings. If they wanted to be anonymous, that was fine, but we wouldn't be able to get back to them. So you might want to put something similar to that in there. Um, let's let's first see how it's. Uh, my suggestion would be to see how it works this way, because hopefully people, if they feel as though they're going to be recognized for putting in the extra effort, which is really what I hope comes out of it, mm -hmm. okay, um, and that we learn things that maybe we we wouldn't otherwise know. And even the administration wouldn't otherwise know. Because, you know, not everything comes uphill. 
it has a way of stopping someplace along the line. Hmm. Never have hmm. run up you know? here. And if the only people who have good ideas are the people at the top, the people at the bottom say, you know, I, my opinion isn't worth anything. And I, I, I'd like to, to, if possible, make sure that the people that work for us don't have that opinion. I'm not saying they do. I'm hoping that they don't. Yes, Bill. Mr. Chairman, you know, uh, I, I, I think uh, Joe's uh, familiar with this. You know, it would, it would almost be nice to have a program where we could award, you know, people, you know, certain financial, you know, contributions in terms of if they put a suggestion in that we can document saves of ten thousand dollars for the first year, give them a give them ten percent, give them a thousand dollars. That would encourage that. I would encourage I, I would encourage the budget subcommittee to talk about that. And 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 just as they did it at at, uh, at, at in the Navy, not that it's right, is that you wouldn't get credit if it was your supervisory responsibility. But if it's not, you know, a supervisor's responsibility, okay. and he, even a supervisor could, could participate in a, in a benefit if he found something in another, you know, uh, organization, if you may. Agree. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Bill. I think if the budget subcommittee came up with guidelines, and the budget subcommittee, because if you if you were going to be if you're going to be financial incentive, what, 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 what are you calling this thing? It has to be in the emails. What are you calling this? So I can just employee know what I'm talking email. about. It's it's employee, employee suggestion suggestion email. email. Thank you. It used to be calling it maybe beneficial. I would, and I would hope that we would. Benny uh, Sug. Benny Sug, which is beneficial uh, suggestion, suggestion program. I would hope that we would look at it as uh, <laughs> right a head. And uh, I don't know about the monetary, and I shouldn't be saying it here. <laughs> I should save it for the budget subcommittee. Can, uh, before we, I make a motion to dismiss. Since we have the budget subcommittee, you're obviously appointed. a teacher. We're gonna, you're going to dismiss us tonight rather than adjourn. <laughs> dismiss, because <laughs> you need to leave some of it here. Um, Excuse me. You are the chair. When do you suggest that the budget subcommittee? ASAP. Get the case? Do we have? <laughs> well, I want to know the ground rules. Do we have to? Not I tomorrow. To no. no, I'm not coming out tomorrow. Do I have to contact you? I want to follow no. the. Uh, no, you work with um, the administration, Ned, and the superintendent. Um, Thank you. To go over the budget. Uh, I know what the work is, but when do we know? You said I'd have to get with Mr. Draper or the superintendent to call the first meeting. I don't want to be on the committee name. We are going to meet. Then we also have to advertise at the yeah, Secretary of State's website, so we have to have at least three days. So the subcommittee only has to be on the secretary. 48 hours, right? 48 hours, right. 48 yes, hours. 48 hours. So it'll, just once we talk to the administration about what date is available for them and us, then we'll just need to make sure we have 48 hours to advertise. And I would hope that the chair would make it. Okay, so we're, we're uh, okay. So I would hope that the chair would, uh, in his weekly meeting with the chair and the vice chair, with the superintendent and whoever they meet with, would stress the importance of it because no use in the budget subcommittee if we don't meet and get things back because the budget has a very short time period. Okay. So would you convey that? And Mr. Draper, you're here. Could you get that? Okay. Um, very short time. Okay, I just want to remember. So the, the items that we didn't cover tonight will be on the agenda of the next meeting, okay? And how many days do we, Mrs. Page, have to suggest items for the agenda? For the budget subcommittee? No, no, for the agenda in general. Oh, <clears throat> 14 days ahead of time. I would suggest that um, I'll get on the, uh, if the school committee secretary is that we revisit the policy of 14 days to get an item on the agenda. You can't. Well, <clears throat> the issue about having it any I didn't mean for discussion. Mm -hmm. Let's get it on the agenda, and then we'll save it for that. Okay, I'll be more than happy to tell you, um, talk to you about that. Uh, there's some problems with advertising in the newspaper, and that's why we've had they the 14 days. They don't take advertisement once a week? They do, but in order to, we have to have it in Monday for Thursday, and so it's, then you're usually making it up on Friday, so it's just a matter of, 
You know, it's backtracking. Okay, um, this, this isn't on the, the agenda. Um, we need to move forward and, and adjourn. Yes. I just want to remind you that the items that were not covered tonight will be on the next agenda. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. Motion to adjourn. Good night. Good night, all. Good night, Mrs. Calabash. Wherever you